In this tutorial, we'll play around with the animation track. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone, this is Omar Balfaki. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. If not, welcome to this channel where I create game development tutorials and from time to time I upload my short films. So, if you're interested, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video is uploaded. Today is the second tutorial of the Getting Started with Timeline series. In the first one, we learned how to create a timeline and use the activation track. In this tutorial, we're going to explore the second track, which is the animation track. And it's going to be more fun, hopefully. And before we start, you can follow or ask me on any of these social media platforms. I'd love to answer your questions. And you can join our Discord server for community discussions. Links available in the description below. Let's get into it. As always, we want to start with the basics. Then we can implement what we learned into an actual scene. For now, let's say we would like to animate the red sphere. Select the timeline, then we can create a new animation track either by right click, animation track, or we can simply drag the game object here, then select animation track. Notice that it adds an animator component automatically. In order for the animation track to work, it needs an animator component. To start recording an animation, click on the red recording button. Now it's recording. So if I move the sphere, it'll create a keyframe automatically. Or we can create a keyframe by selecting the sphere, then right click on the component you wish to animate, and then add key. Now let's move a few frames or seconds away and create the second keyframe. Let's drag the sphere up. Notice that the timeline unit is in seconds. You can switch between frames and seconds by clicking on the options icon here and select your preferred unit. For now, I'll leave it as seconds as it's easier to measure. To edit the animation, you can click on the graph icon here and you can adjust the curves. If you want to have more control or a different view, you can double click here and it will open the animation window. Or you can select the track, right click, and edit in animation window. In the animation window, we can modify the keyframes directly or we can play around with the curves. After you're done with your animation, you can convert it into an animation clip that can be reusable. Select the track, right click, convert to clip track. Now we see it as a clip and we can move it around to adjust its timing. This can be useful when dealing with many tracks to sync all the animations. If you look closer at the clip, you'll notice an infinity symbol on the left and right side of the animation clip. Select the animation clip, then in the inspector, we have animation extrapolation. It has two fields, pre and post extrapolate. Basically, they control what to play or show once we're before or after the animation clip. If we play the animation, we'll see that nothing happens until the playhead reaches the animation clip. The cool thing is that we can change that behavior using the pre-extrapolate. At the moment, it's set to hold, so it's keeping the current position until the animation is played. We can change it to loop, which is gonna play the animation over and over again. There's a cool option, ping pong. It's like the boomerang effect. It plays the animation, then plays it in reverse, which gives a smooth and seamless loop animation. And I'll choose that for now. As for the post extrapolate, it's exactly the same. So now if we move the playhead through the timeline, you'll see that before we pass the animation, the ping pong effect is active. But as we pass the animation, it stops. That's because the post extrapolate is set to hold. If we change it to ping pong and try to move the playhead after the animation, we'll see that it's working. But if we play the animation, the timeline stops after the animation clip, which is because there are no other clips in the timeline, and the current animation clip is the last. Let's see how we can reuse that animation. We want to use the same animation on the green platform, for instance. 
First, we'll drag the platform into the timeline and create an animation track. Then copy the animation clip, Ctrl C or right click, copy, and then paste, Ctrl V or right click, paste. Let's drag it to have a different timing than the sphere. It's cool, but the platform needs to be pulled down a little. To change the position while having an animation is not a direct method. If you tried moving it with the move tool and play the animation, it goes back to the animation position. To move it, we need to override its position. Generally, there are two ways. First, use an apparent. Let's create an empty game object and reset its position. Now drag the platform into the game object as a child. If we move the parent game object and play the animation, we'll see the new position. What if you don't want or can't use a parent object for the animation? There is another way. Changing the animation clip offset. Select the animation clip. Then in the inspector, we have clip transform offsets. Here, we can change the position and rotation of the animation clip. Either by using the tools or by modifying the values directly. Now, let's see another example. A character. How can we animate it? It's the same process. Drag the character into the timeline as an animation track. Then search for an animation clip and drag it directly into the timeline. Again, if you would like to move the animation, we can either create a parent and move it, or we can change the offset position. If we move it using the offset option, there is an easier way to use it. I recently created a tool to place objects and animation clips with a single click. It's a free tool at the moment. You can get it from the Asset Store. The link will be in the description below. There is a short tutorial about it. It's pretty simple. After installing it, go to Window, OB Tools, Object Placer. I'll just duck it to the side here. We want to move the animation clip, so choose the Timeline Clip option. Now select the animation clip and click Place Object. Now you can click on any surface that has a collider and it will place it there. Just refresh the timeline and you'll see the character's position has changed. You can check the offset and you will see that the values were updated. The cool thing about timeline is that we can have smooth transitions between animations. Let's drag another animation here and play. We see that the two animations are playing in two separate worlds. The first thing we need to fix is the offset. The new animation has the default offset. We don't have to position it again. We can simply select the clip and right click, then match offset to previous clip. And it will try to match its offset to the previous animation's offset. Now when playing, we can see that the two animations have a matching offset. But if you look closely, we'll see the second thing we need to fix, which is the transition between the two animations. We can smooth that transition by simply dragging the second animation into the first one. The more we drag, the slower and smoother the transition is. Let's match the offset one more time. If we play now, we'll see that the two animations are playing smoothly. Now, let's apply what we learned into an actual scene. You can get this level from the Asset Store. I'll leave a link in the description below. So, we have three characters. We want the two to be chasing that zombie. Let's drag them into the timeline and add a running animation to the cops and a different zombie running animation to the zombie. They disappeared because their offset position is 0, 0, 0. Let's use the object placer to place them here. Now if we play the timeline, we'll see them chasing each other. Let's add more spices into the scene. There are two cameras in my scene. We'll switch between them using the activation track. The first one is the establishing shot, and the other one is just a white shot. Drag them as an activation track, and switch between them from establishing to white and back to establishing. And one final touch. We can animate the camera in the establishing shot to give a cooler shot or mood. Drag it again, this time as an animation track, and just animate it. 
Now we have created a simple, short and interesting scene. So this is the end of this tutorial. I hope you find it helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. We'll explore more about timeline in the upcoming tutorials. And again, if you haven't subscribed and you, you want to see more of these tutorials, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video is uploaded. This is Omar Bafiki. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.